on today's topic of Western boots, we have three different Ariat boots today. Three different levels, three different styles, three different looks of Ariat Western boots. Uh, I wanted to kind of showcase the different styles that you might have, different options, and their different price points. A lot of people don't understand the reason for the different price points, so I'm here to just maybe break that down, maybe uh, give you a little insight as to why this boot is $200 and this boot is $130. So let's just kind of start this way. This is the Ariat um, Sport Riggin boot, is what it's called. So this boot is built more like a tennis shoe using those kind of techniques, that kind of style. I mean, of course, it doesn't look like a tennis shoe. This is clearly a Western boot. It's all leather, so this is by no means a cheap boot. But this is the entry level for Ariat. So if you're just looking for boots, uh, knock around uh, boots, something to just throw on that you don't have to really worry about or anything like that, this is an awesome boot. Really a good looking boot, really nice leathers, considering the price point on this boot. Uh, this is going to be competing with other brands like Laredo and stuff like that. Um, so really easy price point to get into, but you're getting a really quality, good looking boot and that's you know really what matters. So a couple of points here, reasons, uh, features uh, specific to this boot here. It has a rubber sole, so just a one piece heel and sole right here. Um, you can see there are some things that they use, some techniques they'll use to mimic the styling of a higher end boot. Higher end boots will have a leather stacked heel, big pieces of leather that they stack and glue and nail together. You can see the lines in here, there's really what it is, is just printed lines on a rubber boot to give it that look of a leather stacked heel which people have gotten used to uh, seeing on boots on a sole. So if it was just a smooth piece right there you may not really notice that but it, if it was smooth your your mind would say it's something that looks off for some reason and that's why so they, that's why they put the lines on here is to mimic leather stacking but obviously this is a rubber heel so no stacking is happening here that's just mimicking that look um, but really not a bad boot right here all one piece of rubber another thing to note uh, another feature that they're using to mimic higher end things is this uh, staining on the welt here, as you can see, is uh, a lighter staining than the sides of the, you know, the natural leather here, the rubber. Um, so what it is, is just a painted welt right here. It's not actually a piece of leather right there, so it's not going to perform like leather. It's not going to, uh, you know, shrink, uh, contract and expand like leather does when it gets wet and stuff like that. This is just a piece of rubber, and they just stitched it down right here. Uh, so not an actually leather piece right here. Also something to notice is the, the insole. That's something you should definitely pay attention to when you're buying boots. Uh, a lot of times when you're paying a little bit less for boot, the reason why they got the cost down, one reason uh, shows itself in the insole. So really not much happening in this insole right here. Pretty, uh, it, it doesn't get much more flimsy than this. This is really nothing to write home about in the insole department. Uh, 4LR is the technology in this particular area boot, which I forget what it means. Um, yeah, I don't really care, and you probably don't care either. But that, this is a very flimsy type of insole. So that's one thing you're going to notice when you put your foot in there. Uh, it's a very good fitting boot. So, you know, fit is, is important when it comes to comfort, but you're not going to get a whole lot of cushion out of this. And so if that's something that you're looking for in a boot, a lot of cushion comfort right out the box this is not going to be the boot for you unless you upgraded the insole and that's always an option too so think about that not a leather line right here they actually put a uh, mesh lining in this boot uh, which for some people is a good thing if you like that cooler feeling a little bit more comfortable uh, feeling whenever you put your foot inside a boot this is going to be up against your calves a lot of people like this especially in the summertime around here uh, you may want that mesh lining like that uh, so that could be uh, a plus for you actually, but here is the Ariat Sport Riggin boot is what it's called and price we have it at is 145 So I did lie to you earlier 
uh, step up number two here. This is another line here called the Circuit Herd Boss. So a really nice looking smooth leather boot from Aria, which you don't see very often. And I uh, find that a lot of people really drawn to the leather of this boot. I uh, myself personally am very drawn to this type of look with uh, like black dark brown on light brown you know dark brown stitching on light brown leather uh, that burnished leather is kind of giving it sort of a two-tone factor going on here you can see the toes maybe a little darker than the rest of the boot which gives it that vintage kind of worn in feel right out the box which is awesome uh, and of course as you wear these boots that weather is gonna wear in and give it a natural patina and stuff like that and it's just gonna be really nice so uh, still all the same height on these boots that is worth mentioning this is a uh, you know a western roper style almost with the uh, a walking heel wide square and a low top uh, so really all the same silhouette of boot but you know different looks of course so this one the the main thing you're noticing is that standout smooth leather a little bit of a shine to it but not a one color shine I never really was drawn to a one color, you know, just an all black or all brown boot. This has uh, depth and dimensions to it, uh, which make it really awesome. So, uh, another reason why this boot may cost a little more, price coming in at 182 This uh, is going to have a leather sole. So, a little bit of treatment going on to the leather sole here. You can see they stamped it with a, uh, a press with a little design in it, you know, it almost looks like tire tread. Um, no real function for that, it's really just an aesthetic thing. Uh, but this is a leather sole boot. Um, so leather typically costs, adding a few dollars to the, to the price and the cost of the boot here uh, over a rubber sole. Um, especially the basic type of rubber sole like you see here. So this is just an all leather sole. Uh, it's it's a dyed welt, so it's not contrasting welt like uh, these other two boots are, um, but still a leather welt. So, again, adding a little bit of cost to the boot. This is an unlined boot, so no mesh lining like we talked about in the other one. This one is just all leather pigskin on the inside, um, which some people prefer, some people don't. But I personally prefer this a little bit more of a raw kind of uh, traditional lining on this boot. So, let's see the uh, insole. This is definitely an upgraded insole. Maybe hard to tell here, but it is thicker. It's quite thicker than the last one that we tried. Instead of just a styrofoam piece, this one actually has some memory foam to it. Um, a cupped heel on it. So, that's really a substantial amount of cushioning in this uh, insole here. A little bit of texture to it, so it feels good on your foot. Um, but definitely an upgrade in the insole department. Still a hard uh, midsole in the in the footbed, uh, which is fine and that type of thing. It breaks in, um, but not. There's only one uh, layer of cushioning in this boot, and that would be in the insole. So some boots you'll see a little bit more in the midsole, the outsole, and all that. Nothing but cushioning. This one is all in the insole, so that's something to think of. I would call this like a mid-range boot at the price range of 182 and with these type of features but a really nice boot nonetheless uh, really I think this is gonna be this is brand new but this is gonna be a favorite I think because of that color combination the smooth leather the leather outsole it's a very lightweight boot and really right in there with the, uh, an awesome price point I think so a very good value for a boot right here the Ariat what is it called circuit Herd Boss is this boot here. All right, the next one, the third one I'm going to show you today is the Ariat Arena Rebound is the line of boots here. And this is just a really good looking boot. I think they really nailed the styling on this particular boot. It's, I mean, it's just so cool. You have, uh, you know, stitch patterns on boots are kind of all over the place these days. This is more of a traditional styling, I would say, you know, like a seven or eight uh, row stitch pattern where uh, you can see there. This one is really just jazzed up, man. They got the embroidery with the lightning bolts on it, plus the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten row stitch pattern on there. Uh, that's just a really cool top. Another thing that really makes this boot stand out to me, to other boots, is the uh, contrasting heel counter as opposed to the vamp of the boot here. So like a real like dark 
bull hide on the heel counter and then just a pebbled leather on the front in a more lighter color which uh, it really makes it pop to me uh, of course maybe your jeans will probably cover that heel counter normally uh, depending on how you wear your jeans but whenever it does show up and you have that contrasting piping right here on the uh, on the side just all these colors right here it really makes it a good looking boot um, that you wouldn't normally see so it, it stands out among other things that people are used to seeing in boots uh, another thing that is kind of subtle but it is a uh, it is present on the bug and wrinkle here, the medallion of the boot. You can see, and you, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but there is a different stitch pattern. It's got a, incorporating that lightning bolt into the uh, into the pattern here that you see on the top. So that's just a subtle thing you probably wouldn't even see from uh, you know uh, viewing distance of seeing it on somebody's foot from when you're standing it's it's you know you'd be a little further away but whenever you're really paying attention and getting down and looking at comparing all these boots uh you're looking for subtleties like that that is uh, another thing to pay attention to and another reason why the price is higher on this boot because it's the details man it's all in the details of western boots rubber sole on this one uh similar to the the first one we had a rubber sole but this is a much uh more dense rubber sole it is a uh, pieced rubber sole meaning it's has a <clears throat> rubber sole right here with a leather stacked heel and then a rubber uh, outsole on the, on the bottom heel plate here so really an upgraded rubber sole not all rubber soles are created equal I don't know how much you can tell here but uh, really just generally looking at it and feeling it you can tell there's a different density here and there's more going on so you're getting what you're paying for here uh, we talked about the how that there's a dyed welt on this uh, rubber sole here to make it look like leather if you were wondering what the real deal looks like when it is actually leather here it is in the uh the shoe boss here so this one here has an actual leather welt on there which really upgrades the look of the boot i'm really not sure if it would add any functional purpose to it or not we'll have to maybe ask the boot maker about that but as far as for aesthetics to me it really uh you can tell that that's leather there and you know leather means quality so it's really upgrading your boot here uh, and in that aspect also so we talked about that leather stacked heel before this one actually has leather right here so that is you know another quality piece where it's not just a piece of rubber that's made to look like leather right here this is the real deal so it's gonna add that that quality feel that you have to leather uh, and a real dense outsole here another thing is the shank on this boot has this is the uh, the ATS so advanced torque stability I believe is what it is but what it really comes down to is most of the time there's a shank in a Western boot that just runs from the heel right up to the middle right here and it's just one little metal bar and that's what keeps this boot from instead of just flexing right here you know you don't want your boot to flex in this shank area right here you don't want it to uh, to be bending right there like a tennis shoe will that's why tennis shoes are not good for long periods of time when you feed you need that stability there and that's one of the reasons why people who wear western boots why they prefer that is because of that stability that you have and that comes from the shank well normally a shank is just one piece right here whereas the ATS has this forked shank and that's kind of what this little X here is indicative of a fork shank a big wide piece that comes like that keeps your boot from twisting this way it's gonna keep it straight and that's what keeps your heel from going in and out and uh, it may not seem like much but at the end of the day when you're wearing these boots for a long time you want that stability there and it really does make a difference so that's what that's all about uh, another thing that's gonna be adding cost to the boot you know that's a different shank that's not a normal shank that you put in a boot really nice insole in here this uh it's pretty similar to the one that's in this boot here just based off a of feel of course they gave it a different color but i think this is actually the same uh insole here it's just dyed red i guess uh but you know same shape cupped heel just flat all throughout but with a lot more cushion uh no same uh midsole in here no uh cushioning added to that but uh definitely an upgraded outsole so a couple of things on here you know attention to detail you can see the two-tone leather right here on the pull straps you know you don't even see that when you're wearing it but it's detail that you want in a boot like this whenever you grab these boots to wear them every day you're putting your fingers in here you're seeing those details it makes you feel good and you those are the things that you look for in a boot whenever you want something that's just a little bit more you can just tell that more attention was paid 
to these boots when they were made. It makes you pay more attention to them when you wear them and you feel like you're getting more for your money for these boots. And that's, you know, this is, a lot of this stuff is just based on a feeling. And uh, of course you're paying for more quality, but all these little details like this that don't really have any function per se, it's just, uh, it makes you feel better. And that's, and that's one reason why uh, people will want to pay a little bit more for boots like this. In case, just in case you were wondering who would pay uh, $225 or whatever the price is on these. These are $200. $200. So really an excellent deal uh, for these boots. But that, there's a reason why, you know, $140, $200. Those are the things that you're paying for. The same brand, same style, different boots. And those, hopefully I highlight some of those differences for you so you can maybe have a better understanding of why these boots are priced differently. And maybe it uh, gives you an idea as to what you are, you know, help you find your style and what you're looking for in a boot. What do you want to see when you look down at the pair of boots that you're wearing? What do you, what boots do you gravitate towards when you in your closet and you want to grab some boots? What do you want to be putting on your feet, you know? And, uh, and for some people, it's, gonna, it's not really going to matter, and you, it can be anything. It may not be a, even a boot that we have here, for sure, because there's tons more styles, and I lo would love to get into all the rest of them that we have. So stay tuned for all that. But these, uh, these are, are all three brand new boots I thought would make a good highlight to show you the differences um, in the same brand with different quality uh, features um, and benefits on all of these boots so hope you enjoyed that uh, stay tuned for more and yeah thanks for watching